Right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Powered by FanDuel Sportsbook. All right, Dan, thanks very much, and welcome to the Fan Cave, everyone. This is where we talk with you, and we love talking sports. Call us at 412-575-2600. You can also tweet at KD Pump. That's my Twitter address. At the Pony Express is Andrew Filipponi's Twitter address, and you can hit us both up and let us know what you think about all the big items of the day. And let's go up to the Pony Show up at 93.7 The Fan. And, Andrew, I want to talk first about the Pirates, who've now won three in a row. Texas tonight had their ace pitcher going, and he got blasted. The Houston Astros were leading them at last check, 10 nothing. That would mean a one-game separation with three left. The Pirates can actually end up with a two pick, not the one pick by virtue of all this winning, which hasn't happened all year. Your take. <laughs> yeah, coming at the worst possible time. This is the uh, uh, the opposite of serendipitous, Bob. This is uh, <laughs> brutal. Now, look, uh, the diff- I- I'm trying to talk myself into the idea that maybe the second pick in the draft is not the end of the world. If you go back and look at the last 20 years, The second pick is just as likely to be a great player as the number one pick. However, I've heard so much about Kumar Rocker over the last two months. I've watched the Pirates suffer for 50-plus games. I had my heart set on the guy. You you, You put me onto him today. I was watching highlights of the guy at Vanderbilt. He was unbelievable in the College World Series (laughs) last year. They practically carried carried him off the field in Omaha like he was Rudy. He pitched so well for them in the 2019 College World Series. So, you know, this guy might have Garrett Cole tendencies. And if that's the guy they take, hopefully they don't screw him up like they did at the end of Garrett Cole's tenure with the Pirates. So, yeah, this would be not quite disastrous, Bob, but it would be a disappointment for sure. Yeah, it's something you wouldn't expect either because they had a healthy lead over Texas at one point and now by winning three in a row. And the one good thing about that is we've seen some encouraging signs from the pitching staff. I I think Chad Cool is... Uh, answered some questions. I think Stephen Brault may also be somebody to factor in, and uh, JT Brubaker looks promising to me. So those are things I didn't necessarily, you know, count on, but they are happening, and I don't know what to make of them because sometimes you go into this and you wonder if it's the final spasm of a dying team or is this something really to build upon, Andrew? It's hard to assess. Well, I'm not a big, yeah, I'm not a big fan of fool's gold late in the year. I mean, I can give you countless examples in the NFL Look at Baker Mayfield in the second half of his, of his rookie season. Everybody was convinced he was great. Look at the Atlanta Falcons last year. They started 1-7. and seven. They finished 6-2. and two. They brought their coach back, and they don't know how to recover an onside kick now. So I, I never want to overanalyze what happens with, when a bad team starts winning late in the year, whether it's football, baseball, basketball, hockey. It doesn't matter to me. I'm looking at individual success stories, Bob, and, and I see – as far as I'm concerned, I see two real ones. Cabrian Hayes has come up here. I don't know what the Pirates were talking about. The guy's not ready. He's hit 300, and he plays an incredible third base. And the other one is Mitch Keller. When he's been healthy this year, I would say more often than not, Keller has looked like the type of upper echelon pitcher that he was pegged as as a prospect. The, the Brault thing to me, Bob, you know he reminds me of Jeff Locke where Locke would tease you, he'd have three or four great starts in a row, and people would say, see, that's why he's still in the Pirates rotation, and he'd follow it up with five terrible starts, and he did that here for what, like four or five years? And I feel the same way about Braun. I'll give you another example, Neil Heaton, you don't remember him, but he's another guy who came here, left-hand pitcher, and made an all-star appearance, and then fell off the face of the earth. I mean, that kind of stuff happens, I get it. Real quick, I want to get your take on the Penguins Mandate official today. Uh, Patrick Hornquist, who's been a big part of what they've done, First trade Jim Rutherford ever made as a Pittsburgh Penguin general manager, and boy, what a trade that was. He gave up a good asset in James Neal at the time, but they knew what they needed. He brought it. Question is, do they have a replacement for him? It was supposed to be Zach Aston Reese, but from what I've seen, I don't know that he, you know, you may classify him as a poor man's Patrick Hornquist, but he's not even that at this point. What do they have, and how much of that grit will be missing? Well, I think the net front guy on the top power play unit becomes Jake Gensel. Bob, and he's not built like Hornquist, and he might not play with the same pugnacious attitude, but he does, to me, the same thing. He might come in a smaller package, but I like Gensel when he's healthy and not coming back from a shoulder injury. I like him in that spot, and the Penguins do too, I think, all things considered. Uh, I like this trade. 
Now, they're, they're, they're not a finished product. I mean, you can't pay left shot defensemen $17 million combined for 2021 in a cap sport. I mean, it just, they got too many bodies there. So we know right. this isn't the last move, but I think Matheson has qualities and traits that have worked here when the Penguins have found reclamation defensemen. So, and he's younger than Hornquist. So I think I'm, just my gut reaction to this, Bob, is to not kill the Penguins like a lot of people are. They're right. getting all kinds of criticism. Well, they, they, I think people are judging Hornquist based on his past and not his present and, and future. I, I understand that, but the one thing he can do and that Jake Ensel cannot do because he'll be out with injury every day is go to the front end of the net. He is a big disturber there. Nobody else can match that. Every single night he's out there. With regard to Matheson, they're looking at him as like, uh, you know, Justin Schultz or Trevor Daly. They can bring in a guy and it's a better fit here. We'll see. He had eight goals. He fits into what they like to do from the uh, blue line. But, uh, you know, I, I don't mind this trade for now, but do I still like I pop? have concern like it, about who Give they're going to replace like Patrick Hornquist with. What's that? Do you like the trade? I, I like it for what it represents, but I'm, I'm I just Patrick Hornquist is irreplaceable in what he does in front of the net. I want someone who's that willing to go there and that willing to sacrifice, uh, you know, his own uh, self perseverance or whatever, uh, whatever the word is. I mean, he, there's no one else who does what he does, you know? Uh, so I, I just, I wonder who's going to be that guy. And I think you need that in the NHL today. Anyway, we're way over time here, Andrew. We're going to take a break. When we come back, more calls. 412-575-2600. That is the number to call. Let us know what you think. Tweet us, call us. We'd like to hear from you because this is your place to do it. It is the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call, seven nights a week on Pittsburgh CW.